So what is the rural economy like today in the eastern Ontario Highlands? Well, this is one of the poor areas of southern Ontario. There are relatively few good paying jobs that last year round up here. Many people end up having to work away for the hydro, for long distance trucking, uh, or for other enterprises that are not based in the region because there are no full-time uh, jobs up here. Uh, or where they do exist, they tend to be relatively low-paying service sector jobs. The main employment sectors for those who do stay here year-round are small retailers that often cater to the tourists, especially in the summertime, uh, construction, small-scale forestry, a little bit of sand and gravel mining, and so on. Um, now there are some implications. The fact that the human activity up here is relatively dispersed and relatively modest in terms of land use means that there's a very high level of biodiversity in this region. Most of the native species that were present here at the time of European contact are still found in, in the eastern Ontario highlands. Species like bears, wolves, coyotes and so on. Uh, as well as some people claim to have seen cougars in the backcountry here. So it's a very healthy ecosystem in terms of the animal biodiversity. Many of the forests have recovered from the heavy logging that took place in the early 20th century and in the 19th century. Uh, and so many of those forests are today uh, consist of a good mix of mature trees uh, and sustainable forest management practices in the area are helping to reinforce that. So we have a very nice intact ecosystem here. In the waterways here, the fish populations are not nearly as strong as they were at the time of European contact, but at the same time, they're still relatively healthy. The water is still of good quality. You have a good mix of fish species in the water. Now, for people who live up here today, uh, many of the things that urban Ontarians take for granted, things like access to a cell phone connection, or high-speed internet, or a family doctor, or so on, these things are hard to come by up here in the eastern Ontario Highlands. If you get sick, if you need to go to the hospital, it's about an hour's drive away from here. If you're a child and you want to play organized hockey or want to take dance lessons, um, again, you have to drive for about a half hour to an hour to, to access those, tort, those sorts of services. And uh, one of the realities is that young people, they often leave this area for education, for work, after they finish school, and they tend not to come back here. So the result is that you have a relatively aging population. The average age is about 50 plus up here, and it's getting older all the time. And that creates a sort of a feedback loop, doesn't it? As there are fewer young people, there are fewer services for young people, which encourages even more to leave. So what we see up here, and if I want to sort of wrap up this lecture by comparing the eastern Ontario highlands to Prince Edward County down on the shores of Lake Ontario, you have two environments that are relatively close together two geographical locations not too far apart. Uh, both are tourism dependent in many ways. Both are anchored by a well-known provincial park. Uh, and people come to these areas, but they tend to come for different reasons, both in terms to live and for recreational purposes. And the reasons people come to these regions have changed over time. And that's important because we need to think of, well, what brings people to certain places on the landscape as well and how that changes over time. An important term that we often use is that of ecosystem services. Or that is the idea that there are certain attributes of the natural environment that provide valuable resources for human well-being. Now the ecosystem services of the eastern Ontario highlands and of Prince Edward County down near Lake Ontario, they're very different. Down in the county you have good soils, you have a mild climate, whereas up here you have a hard climate but you also have some beautiful healthy forests and some very clean water and a high level of biodiversity. So we've got these two different sets of ecosystem services, but they also have very significant eco environmental limits for human well-being as well. Up here in the eastern Ontario highlands, you have the harsh climate and the inability to have much of an agricultural base up here, so there are only certain things that you can do up here uh, in terms of human livelihoods down in Prince Edward County, you have the opposite. The, the, the area can support a large uh, human population and can support a lot of different human land uses. And so what we have down in Prince Edward County is the opposite problem to here. Here, the challenge that people face is small communities, not a lot of economic activity, but a very high degree of environmental quality. Prince Edward County, you have large numbers of people having impacts on the, on the natural environment and they're testing the limits of the ecosystem to support that human population. 
So for example, the beaches in Prince Edward County, some of them have to be closed in the summertime because of high E. coli counts and water pollution. Um, in the streams and rivers, you have agricultural runoff coming from the fields of the county, getting into the water that puts pressure on the fish species there. You have anthropogenic climate change, which is changing the temperature of the water in the Bay of Quinte surrounding uh, Prince Edward County. And so you have a change in the composition of fish species. So it's moving from cold water species like lake trout and so on to warmer uh, species like bass and pike. And you have cleavages emerging social cleavages between the people who've lived there all their lives and who have farmed there all their lives and the new people who are coming into the county from Toronto, from Ottawa to start new businesses or to uh, have cottages and so on. Um, and one example of that is the wind energy debate. There's uh, right now in 2012, there's a number of commercial enterprises that are planning to establish wind farms in the county. And this is creating quite a bit of friction between, for example, the farmers who will lease their land to the wind turbine companies and the cottagers who don't want those wind turbines in the county because it, it, they fear it will detract from the rural uh, quality of life. So these are some of the things that are going on uh, and they remind us of some of the, the scholarship that has contributed to, the, to environmental studies over the years. So in this video I've talked to a little bit of people like Teddy Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson, I might want to finish with, um, with a quote from Henry David Thoreau, which is, um, people need to believe in something, and I believe I'll go paddling. And so that's what a lot of people do up here, and as soon as I'm done this video, I'm going to do the same. So thanks very much. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you next week uh, when I get back from my trip to Cornell.